Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. I am a big fan of the Ender 5. Um, I like the solid frame, the fully enclosed frame, and I really like the design where the print bed moves up and down, that is to say along the z-axis, instead of back and forth along the y-axis. Because you're moving your print much less, um, I believe it has the potential for greater accuracy. That said, it's a $350 printer. I also love my Prusa i3 MK3. That's a $750 printer. So the Ender 5 does not have all of the capabilities of the Prusa. It doesn't have all the features. The question is, by adding a couple additional features to the Ender, can you move it up the spectrum of printers? Stay tuned. And today we're going to learn how to add a bootloader, how to upgrade the firmware, and how to add a auto bed leveling sensor to an Ender 5. Okay, let's learn something together. Many times, when you watch a video about upgrading software, firmware, bootloaders, hardware on a 3D printer, you see someone take you through it step by step. It's almost a replay of their installation procedure. I'm not going to do that today. And the reason is that the folks at TH3D, where I bought these components, have excellent outstanding tutorials that you can watch to learn the step-by-step. -step. But the process is a bit long and a little bit complicated. And so instead of taking you through those steps in a screen share on a computer or having you watch me with a screwdriver, I'm going to sh tell you about the concepts and the overall flow. Then I'm going to show you some photographs of various steps that are key and unique to the Ender 5 so that you can have a full understanding of what's required to do this. To begin, we need to understand some basic things about how computers operate. When you first turn on a computer, it looks for a program at a known location in its memory. It's the starting point for that computer. At that known location, you can load any type of program you want. In the case of the Ender 5, the program that's loaded at that known location is the control software, which is a variation of the Marlin open source 3D printer control software that controls this printer. In the case of some higher end printers, like let's say my Prusa MK3, instead at that known location, you have a bootloader. A bootloader is a program that not only knows how to load the control program for the printer, but also can check the USB connection to determine whether another computer is attempting to load a new version of the 3D printer control software onto the computer. 3D printers that have bootloaders can be upgraded by just plugging into the USB connection. 3D printers that do not have bootloaders are more complicated to upgrade. The off-the-shelf Ender 5 is more complicated to upgrade. Let's look at the screen for a moment at this slide and we'll walk through the top line. Since the Ender 5 does not have a bootloader, we have to load a bootloader onto the Ender 5. You cannot load a bootloader onto the Ender 5 via the USB connection because there's no bootloader to read from the USB connection. Instead, when we open up the computer, there's a header with six pins, a connection with six pins. That connection is called an in-circuit serial programming interface. We have to connect to the in-circuit serial programming interface with a computer that has special software 
for upgrading the starting location on the computer, loading a new bootstrap program onto the computer. A standard PC doesn't have those types of connections. We're going to use an UNO microprocessor board that has those connections and also has a USB connection. So our computer is going to connect to the UNO over a USB connection. The UNO has a bootloader. It knows how to read software from the USB connection. We're going to load software onto the UNO that knows how to connect to the ICSP connection on the Ender 5. We're going to use that connection to load a bootloader on the Ender 5. Okay, try to say that five times really, really fast. You'll see when we go through the steps, it's not quite as complex as that. But um, there are a number of steps we have to take. In the second line, we now have a bootloader on our Ender 5. And once we do, we can just connect with the USB connection to the Ender 5, and we can upgrade the control program, the firmware, anytime we want. Here's our UNO microprocessor board. You'll see there's a six pin header labeled ISCP for in-circuit serial programming. We're going to connect those six pins to the equivalent six pins that are on the control board in our Ender 5. That's going to allow us to load the boot loading software onto the Ender 5. The software we're going to use to do this is available packaged together from TH3D. Now you could download the software separately, you could modify it yourself, you could download the Arduino programming software yourself, but they made it get very easy for you. What's most important is they have a series of tutorials you should watch. Don't use this tutorial as the only instruction on how to do, install this software on your computer. I'm trying to give you the big picture. If you turn your Ender 5 on the side, you'll see that there are four screws. You'll also see that this printer is unplugged. That's very important. You'll also see there's a piece of blue painter's tape holding the back on. And the reason is, when I take out those four screws, you'll see there's a fan attached to the back that's connected to the control board. If that falls suddenly, you could break that connection. So you want to release that slowly and then unplug that connection from the control board. Now that we have the back off the Ender 5, we can begin connecting the UNO to the control board in the Ender 5. To begin with, we have to connect the six pin header, five of those six pins, as outlined in the detailed instruction videos, five of those six pins to five of those six pins on the Ender 5. The six pin on the Ender 5 connects to another location on the UNO. Now that we have the UNO connected to the control board on the printer, we have three steps we have to take with the Arduino software. The first step is we're going to put a program on our UNO that's going to turn it into a programmer for our Ender 5. Specifically, we're going to turn it into a computer that is able to flash an EEPROM with a bootloader. The second step, we're going to take and use the UNO as a device controlled by the Arduino software to flash the bootloader, to put the bootloader on the Ender 5. Then the third step is we're going to close up our Ender 5 connect our Ender 5 directly over a USB cable to our computer. We're still going to use the Arduino software, but this time we're going to use the software to load the firmware onto the Ender 5. Prior to loading the firmware onto the Ender 5, we're going to set some configuration options in the firmware provided by TH3D. We're going to compile that software, and that's the firmware we're going to load. Now we're going to first print a bracket and mount the sensor on our printer. Now the EZABL is a capacitive sensor. That means it never touches the print bed. 
They have a competitor in the market called the BL Touch. And that physically has a probe that touches the print bed. There are advantages and disadvantages to both. The capacitive sensor is in general more accurate and it's much less likely to break. There are no moving parts. The BL Touch has moving parts that can wear out, that can break. However, because it's a physical sensor, you can more easily change your print bed surface. Maybe sometimes you print on glass, other times you print on a spring steel sheet. When you change the print bed and you're using a capacitive sensor, you have to recalibrate it. Doesn't take a long time, but it is an extra step. We're going to carefully position our probe so it's two millimeters above the print bed. Now, it just so happens that three Dr. Bags business cards are almost exactly a millimeter. So in my case, I use six business cards to position it properly. You then disconnect the Z limit switch. On this printer right here is the Z limit switch. Now mine's still here, but you'll see there's no cable connected to it because I took the cable from that Z limit switch and I connected it to the electronic components of the Easy ABL. Using the Easy ABL, you don't have to cut any wires, you don't have to splice any wires, you just disconnect the limit switch, you connect it to the Easy ABL, you plug it into the transformer they provide, and you're ready to go. You'll see a picture on the left here of what the electronic components look like. I have a cable tied onto the frame. Next, you need to tell your slicer that you wanted to probe the bed. So they, in the instructions with, from TH3D, they give you a recommended begin of print sequence that hones the sensor and then does a G29, which is the G code command. And I'll show you that in operation in a moment to probe the bed, store the matrix of distances and use that to refine the first layer print. Okay, so that's it for the installation. Let's watch some video together of a couple of the uh, next steps and then I'll wrap everything up. Okay, I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, I am a fan of TH3D. I recommend you buy their products. Um, I do not have an affiliate relationship with them. I paid for my products from them. I just think they're a good company. Um, I also believe you should watch their videos if you're gonna use their product. They will be up to the date. I hope you learned something today. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Recommend it to your friends. Thanks so much. Let's continue to learn things together.